I think there's a way Ryan Garcia can beat Gervonta Davis. For my older fans, you're probably thinking, I'm a hypocrite. One of my earliest videos on this channel, and quite possibly the video that made this channel, was me saying that Gervonta Davis was levels above Ryan Garcia. But I do think there is still a way Ryan Garcia can win over Gervonta Davis. The idea intrigued me and I got to thinking about this when a couple weeks ago, Ryan Garcia and Gervonta Davis revealed that they were going to fight in 2023. Despite me saying and still believing that Gervonta Davis will convincingly win over Ryan Garcia, I still do think there's a legitimate chance and a legitimate way for Ryan Garcia to possibly win. Now yesterday at the time of this recording, I posted on my community poll asking you guys how Ryan Garcia could possibly win against Gervonta Davis. Now a couple of you bastards decided to answer this poll very smart but a couple of you guys actually had smart responses and a majority of those responses highlighted the obvious reach and height advantage. Ryan Garcia is about five inches taller than Gervonta Davis and he also has a two and a half inch reach advantage over Gervonta as well. So it would be very beneficial for Ryan Garcia to stay behind his straight punches, especially his jab and utilize his reach advantage. Mario Barrios, a fighter that has a very similar height and reach as Ryan Garcia, had a lot of success in the early rounds when he fought Gervonta Davis by sticking his jab and his straight right hand and essentially utilizing his reach advantage to keep Gervonta Davis at bay. And joke on him all you want, but Roly Romero actually had a lot of success in the early rounds when he fought Gervonta Davis and had a lot of success with that jab. So if Ryan Garcia can utilize his reach advantage like a Mario Barrios or Roly Romero and couple that with his insane speed, I mean, he's going to give a lot of problems to Gervonta Davis, especially if he punches in bunches. And it should be noted that Mario Barrios and Roly Romero were able to have this type of success because of Gervonta Davis's inactivity in early rounds. Tank is obviously known to be a power puncher, but he always tries to methodically find his openings, especially in the early rounds. This leads to him taking off some rounds, and in the second round, I believe, against Mario Barrios, he only landed one punch. So again, in those early rounds when Gervonta Davis is kind of downloading that data and trying to find openings for his power punches, he's going to be taking off those rounds and landing very few shots. In those instances, Ryan Garcia should take advantage of this and land those straight punches and basically bank these early rounds. On top of this, Ryan Garcia should keep Gervonta Davis busy. Not only should he be banking these rounds by landing these straight punches, but he should land them in bunches and with volume, because by doing so, you'll keep Gervonta Davis mentally busy as well, which is very important because during this time, he's again downloading this data. I think a lot of Gervonta Davis's past opponents' mistakes was that they were throwing these single punches during this time of inactivity, allowing Gervonta to find those openings and easily counter them down the line in the fight. Utilizing volume will keep Gervonta Davis preoccupied with defending these punches instead of trying to find openings to counter them. But Ryan should not be overconfident or overzealous because even if he does find success in backing up Gervonta Davis or landing a lot of punches, this is where Tank is probably at his most dangerous. I mean a prime example of this is Roly Romero when he thought because he was landing so many punches, especially in the early rounds and backing up Gervonta Davis, he got a little overconfident and overaggressive and Gervonta was easily able to counter him with a deadly left hook. The same thing kind of happened with Leo Santa Cruz when in an exchange against Gervonta Davis where he was landing and his confidence was growing, he was able to leave himself open for Gervonta Davis to land probably the deadliest uppercut I've ever seen. Now this is going to be very tough for Ryan, but he has to stay disciplined and he has to stay behind behind his jab and the straight punches and not look for the finish or overextend. Because the moment you're a little too confident or a little too cocky against Gervonta Davis, he'll find that little bit of daylight and put your lights out completely. Now if Ryan is able to stick with the game plan thus far, which means utilizing his reach and utilizing jabs and straight punches and not getting overconfident and taking advantage of Gervonta Davis's inactivity, he also has to try to set up that left hook. The left hook for Ryan Garcia is by far his best weapon and definitely the equalizer in this fight. He landed a nasty left hook on the body of Luke Campbell in his biggest fight to date. He finished Francisco Fonseca with a nasty left hook to his chin and for a majority of his opponents that he has knocked out, he's done it 
through the use of his left hook. So as he's landing these straight punches early in the round and staying disciplined, he also has to feint to the body in order to find that opening for that left hook. Obviously, he's done this before against multiple opponents where he feints to the body to land that left hook upstairs, but he especially has to do this against Gervonta Davis because he has to earn his respect. If he just continues with the game plan we have so far, Tank is eventually going to adapt and start ramping up his activity in the later rounds and might go over the top with those straight punches and might start to bully Ryan. So to keep an aggressive Gervonta Davis at bay, Ryan has to earn his respect and has to check him with a left hook when he's coming in. I can see this as a legitimate scenario where Javante Davis gets overly aggressive and tries to close the gap and tries to negate that reach advantage that Ryan has been using and Ryan could time him coming in with that super quick left hook. And with that, I think that concludes this very simple but very effective, I think, game plan for Ryan Garcia to defeat Javante Davis. I know there is probably a lot of nuances that I missed, but I think generally this is how Ryan Garcia can defeat Javante Davis. Now, as far-fetched as this game plan might be, I think this game plan is very similar to Dimitri Bivol's game plan against Canelo, where the longer fighter didn't allow the shorter, powerful fighter to find his openings and took advantage of that shorter, powerful fighter's inactivity in the earlier rounds when he was trying to find those openings. Bivol was great at utilizing those straight punches, especially the jab, to keep the range and score points while Canelo was trying to find his opening. He stayed busy and he threw with a lot of volume and he also, most importantly, stayed disciplined and didn't allow Canelo to find that opening for a power punch. If Ryan stays disciplined and stuck to this type of game plan, he's going to find the same success Dimitri Bivol did against Canelo. But that's a big if. See, the big difference between a Dimitri Bivol and a Ryan Garcia is that Dimitri Bivol's skill set and his style is really great for this type of game plan. For Ryan, he has none of these skills to implement this game plan, or at least hasn't showcased it enough. He hasn't really shown a good jab or has utilized the jab in volume. He also doesn't really set up his right hand all too much. He really relies on that big left hook. And in trying to land that left hook, he leaves himself wide open if he misses. He kind of throws his left hook and hooks in general with reckless abandonment, and he always tries to find that finish. So he may not be disciplined enough to keep Gervonta Davis at range, and he may overextend and leave himself wide open for a Gervonta Davis counter. And I know this video is about how Ryan Garcia can win over Gervonta Davis, but realistically, this is how I see the fight going. Ryan's gonna get a little overconfident, he's gonna move forward, he's gonna throw his hook, Gervonta Davis is going to find that opening, and Ryan's just simply not gonna have that discipline to keep his range, and Tank is going to find his shot. But if somehow Ryan gets a hold of this video and sees this game plan, I hope that he sticks to this game plan, stays disciplined, and maybe gets a shocker over Javante Davis. That'd be really fun to see. But at the very least, I still just want this fight to happen. I'm so nervous that this fight's gonna fall through, and I know probably it's gonna fall through, but never lose hope. I really wanna see this fight, and what do you guys think? Can Ryan Garcia win over Javante Davis, and how could he do so? Please leave it in the comments below and stay civil. I'll continue to try to upload weekly, or at the very least, bi-weekly. Peace.